Okay, I'm going to need some help here. I brought you all a gift today. All right. So if, uh, is it on? It always helps if you turn it on. Okay, I've got some, uh, these are English New Testaments, actually Gospels of John. Um, if you would help me pass these out, I'd appreciate it. Okay, one for everyone, and if there's leftover, you're more than welcome to grab some more. We'll leave them in the back of the room. Does anybody need a Spanish one? All right, sir, for you over there. Anybody else? Espanol? Se habla espanol? Another one? Otro? Tres? Any more? Espanol? All right. Let's see. Hope you stay here. All right. We'll give you a chance to uh, pass those out because uh, when Jim asked me to share a word with you today, I'm sharing with you the word. <laughs> okay. Now, if you open it up to the first page, it actually starts right there, the Gospel of John. It's technically, it's uh, page number seven, I think it is. But it says the Gospel of John. It says, in the beginning was the Word. Okay, and that was the Word of God. God's, the Father's Word. Okay, that was, in the beginning was the Word. And the Word was God, and the Word was with God. Okay. And if you go down to 14, which I think is on the next page, you'll see that it says... And the Word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld His glory. Okay. So, who is the Word of God? That's Jesus. Jesus became, or was the Word of God, who became flesh. And then when Jesus spoke, His words were recorded in the Gospels. Okay? So, if Jesus was the Word when He spoke, and we wrote down His Word... Then we have his word in print right here. So can I suggest that when you hold this, you're holding Jesus? Amen. Okay? So this is precious. Read this cover to cover. Hold this on your person. Read it before you go to sleep at night. First thing when you wake up in the morning. Thank you. So that the word can dwell in your spirit at night. Okay? Because that's when a lot of things happen in your body, in your mind. When your mind moves those things around, you know. That's when things happen, and, and that will strengthen your spirit, all right? Um, what we're going to do is we're going to turn to page, uh, let me see what page it is here, page 13, and uh, I'm just going to use a little light here. Okay, we're going to talk about a story about Nicodemus, all right? And I'm just going to read this with you, so if you want to read along here. There was a man from the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews, this man came to him at night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you have come as a teacher from God because no one can perform these miracles and uh, miraculous signs you do unless God is with him. So did the Pharisees know that he was the son of God? Yeah. Okay, Nicodemus admitted to it right here, right? Okay, so did they have any excuse really to, cru excuse to, to crucify him? None whatsoever, okay? Nicodemus uh, was one of the, I think there were two Pharisees that believed in him. Nicodemus was one of them. And Nicodemus came to Jesus because he wanted to ask him this question. And the next thing that Jesus says, and this is what, what my talk here is going to be all about tonight. Replying, Jesus said to him, Amen, Amen. Okay, now Amen means, it's kind of like a double yes, like a, you know, guarantee, you know, I guarantee that what I'm about to tell you is the God's honest truth. So if Jesus is the Son of God, you think he's going to say the God's honest truth? Okay, absolutely, right? So when he says amen, amen, it means you pay attention, all right? Because this is important. He says, amen, amen. I tell you, unless one is born again, he cannot, okay, I'm going to emphasize that. He cannot see, see what? The kingdom of God. Okay, so he told Nicodemus very, very plainly, unless you're born again, Nicodemus, you ain't going to see it. You're not going to see the kingdom of God. Okay, you cannot. It's not that you, you can't see it, you know, because it's not in front of you. It's because 
You, your eyes are not focused to it. You don't have it in your sight. You, you just can't see it. It's kind of like, you know, people who are colorblind. They can't see yellows and blacks and whatnot. You know, um, they just can't. All right? So here, it's kind of like a spiritual blindness that he's talking about. Nicodemus asked him, well, how can anyone be born when he is old? He can't enter, enter his mother's womb a second time and be born, can he? Jesus answered, amen, amen. Here it comes again, amen, amen. I tell you, unless one is born of water and the spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. Okay, now the water it signifies basically the word of God. Okay, washed by the word, all right? And the spirit, because when you become a, a born again believer, you get a spiritual birth. It's actually the Holy Spirit who is baptizing you into Jesus. All right? That's how you become born again. Now, the next step is when Jesus turns around and baptizes you into the Holy Spirit, so that now not only do you have the name and the authority of Jesus Christ, but now you also have the power of the Holy Spirit in your life. Okay? A lot of people think it's just a one step. No, it's really... Actually, there's, there's three steps. <laughs> and we're going to talk about all three of these tonight here. And based on where you are at, I'm going to show you the benefits of each one of these steps. And then it'll be totally up to you which steps that you want to make. Okay? Because some of you might be sitting here saying, oh, I'm already born again. I know all this stuff. I'm just sitting here because, you know, it's nice and warm. It's cold outside. And I'm going to get and things like that. But um, we're talking about spiritual fulfillment. Okay? Every time when Jesus would talk to somebody, he used, the, you know, if he was talking about healing or salvation or anything, he used the Greek word sozo, S-O-Z-O. And that word literally meant saved, healed, but the best definition of all was to be made whole. Okay? When the woman with the issue of blood walked behind Jesus and said to herself, oh, if, if I touch the hem of his garment, I will be healed. Okay, that was the word she used that was soda. Okay, the word. Jesus turned around, stopped, and said, Who touched you? And the disciples were like, Lord, everybody touched you. The crowd is strong. What are you talking about? You know, there's, there's, you know everybody's pushing it on you. He said, Nope, nope. I felt virtue go out. I felt power go out. And the woman confessed what had happened and how she was healed. And Jesus said, Woman, your faith has made you whole. And that word again was sozo. It's used something almost like a hundred times in the New Testament. Sometimes it's translated saved, sometimes it's translated healed, but the best translation is made whole. Okay. Because Jesus, you know, he came, he didn't he didn't just come to save us from our sins. He came to make us whole. Okay. He came to give us life and that more abundantly. It's the enemy in John 10:10, 10, 10, it says, and it's also in here in 10:10. 10, 10, um, the thief comes to kill steal and destroy but I came that you may have life and that more abundantly okay has the enemy ever stolen anything from you who, who in here has the enemy stole something from I, for me for sure okay Almost everybody in here <laughs> it's not one person he's no respecter of person either <laughs> he will steal from anybody he will kill anybody he can he will destroy anybody's life if he can okay he will try to destroy your life every second of every day. Okay? And you have, unless you have Jesus, you, you have no power to resist it. Because it says, resist the devil and he will flee from you. Okay? But unless you're born again, and unless you have the power of God in you, you have no power to resist the devil and you become his victim. Okay? You are willing subject to this. Alright? So, now, if Jesus came in the flesh, what did he come to do? Okay. Well, he came as what's called the last Adam. Because the first Adam did what? He ate this out of house and home, right? He ate the fruit. And he blamed his wife for it. Okay. The woman that you gave me, she's the one who gave me the food to eat. But God said, uh uh, nope, out, out of the garden. All right. So because of sin, because they disobeyed, the relationship with God the Father had been broken. Okay? So Jesus came as the last Adam to restore the relationship with the Father. So he's basically coming to you. And if you turn to uh, John 3.16, we all know that part. All right? 
But I'm going to read to you John 3.17 and 3.18, which you may have never read before, all right? Because 3.16 we all know. And that's on page uh, 13, is that it? No, I'm sorry, it's the next page. Oh, it is, it is on 13 still. Okay. Uh, no, it's not. I'm sorry. 14, you're right. For God so loved the world, you all know the verse, right? You don't probably say it in your sleep. That he gave his only begotten son so that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting or eternal life. Now, here's 17. This is the reason why. For God did not send his son into the world to judge the world, and another version uses to condemn the world, okay, but that the world might be saved through him, okay? So if you hear people say, well, you know, ah, it's the judgment of God upon you. Well, that's not what it says here. Jesus didn't come to condemn. He, you know, there's a lot of preachers out there, oh, you know, if you do this sin, you're going to go to hell, blah, 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 blah. Well, Jesus didn't, didn't come to condemn. So why should you? All right? So now let's go to, where is that? Three. Okay, 318. And this is the judgment. That the light has come into the world, and people love darkness rather than the light, because their deeds were evil. Okay? And I skipped a verse purposely, so let's go back to that one. It's 318. I read to 319. Whoever believes in him is not judged, but whoever does not believe in him is already judged, because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. Okay? Now, here's how the enemy comes to you with all that. Oh, you got plenty of time. You have time to make that decision. You don't have to decide right now. You know, you got your whole life ahead of you. Go ahead, have some fun. Do this, do that, do this. And he leads you along. Okay? All right? What he doesn't tell you is that not making a decision, you've already made a decision. Okay? Because it says right here, you're already condemned. Everybody without Jesus, I'm sorry for the bad news, you're already condemned. That if you walk down that street or somehow had an accident or somehow had a stroke or something like that and didn't wake up tomorrow morning and had not chosen for Jesus Christ, where would you be? Okay, I think we all know that, all right? So it's almost like Jesus is throwing you a lifesaver. You're out swimming in the ocean with sharks all around you, okay? And they're nipping at your heels. You can feel them. You know, wish right by your legs. And, Where? You know, Where'd you go? Where'd you go? Okay. And Jesus is throwing you a lifesaver. He's ready to pull you in. Okay. What are you going to say? No, I don't need it. You're drowning. You're in the middle of the ocean. You're doomed if you don't take that lifesaver. And Jesus is there with open arms. You take the lifesaver. I'll pull you in. I'll rescue you. I'll, I'll take you to me. I'll, I'll restore you with the Father. And not only that, like I said in the beginning, Jesus didn't come just to save you from your sins. Okay? He, he, he wants to rescue you and He wants to give you a life that's abundant. Right? He wants to bless you. It says that He has blessed you with every spiritual blessing in high places, in heavenly places. Okay? Now the word blessing is the word eulogy. Okay? That's where we get eulogy from. When you go to somebody's funeral and say something nice, you know, everything... You don't want to say bad things about him because he's dead. You know, you want to say everything nice about the person that you can, all right? Well, that's what Jesus has done in heavenly places before God the Father has said every possible good thing about you that he can, all right? He has blessed you with every spiritual blessing in high places. Everything he has is yours. When you are his and you become a son of God, everything he has becomes yours. Because it says right in this word that you are a direct heir of God and a fellow heir with Jesus Christ. Okay? Now, a direct heir is good already, right? But you know what? Jesus said, all power in heaven and earth has been given to me. Okay, why was it given to him? Because he overcame death and hell. He overcame it by going to the cross and paying for it full price. Okay, did he did he get a discount? 
Did he did it make it hurt a little less because he was the son of God? No, that's what that's what he was debating with the father in the garden. Lord, you know, all things are possible with you. Take this cup from me. Nevertheless, not your will, but my will. That's why he was sweating drops of blood. Because he knew what the pain was going to be. He knew what the agony was going to be. And yet, when they came for him, he said, Who do you see? I am he. Let these others go. Okay. He was protecting his disciples to the very end. And then he surrendered. Now, well, when they came to get him, what did he do? When he said, I am he, the power of the Holy Spirit forced all those soldiers down. They fell. Okay? Not once. Twice. Because he wanted to prove to them that he was in control. And that he was protecting his disciples. He was basically saying, don't you dare let your finger on them. Or you'll fall down a third time. Or a fourth time. As many times as necessary. Right? So Jesus had all the power at that moment. And he surrendered it. For you. And me. Okay? He gave his body. Okay? How many in here would like to go to a cross and be crucified for your, your fellow men in here? Not one person would want to do that. Okay? The horrible death like that? Yeah, he did. He did it for us. Okay? So he came and he did all that, not just to save us from our sins, but to give us a full life. Right? So there's three steps I'm going to talk to you about here tonight. I'm going to let you decide which steps you want to take. You want to take all three of them and have all the full blessings? Wonderful. If you only want to take one step, that's totally up to you. If you want, don't want to take any steps, you've already taken any step. You've already made a decision and you think you know what that is. Right? The first step is that if you have not decided yet to accept Jesus Christ, or it's really the other way around. I, I kind of don't like saying that, that you're accepting Jesus. Because it's really, he's accepting you. He paid the price, not you. Okay. He paid the price. The, the fact that he's willing to accept you, you should be running to him with open arms. And Lord, thank you. <laughs> Praise you, Lord, that you are willing to do all that for me. So that's the first part is where you are surrendering yourself to Jesus. Say, Jesus, forgive me of all my sins. And wash me clean in your blood. You shed that blood for me so that I could be free to live forever and ever with you. Not only in heaven, but eternal life starts right now. Today, it can start for you. Okay? And then you can walk with it every day. And you will already be saved forever, starting right now. All right? So that's the first part. And that's the Holy Spirit that's been working on you. Okay? We heard a testimony from uh, one of the, or writer Bill, his son. He was saying that his, his son, that God had been working on him all those years that he was a Bill. Right? Yeah. Okay? So God is working on you. Whether you, ah, oh, no, God's not working on me. No, no big deal. You know, you can be as tough as you want. But that ain't the truth. When you pull back that veneer, okay, you're scared to death. Right? Okay? Because God made you. He knows you. He, he put this God-shaped vacuum inside of you that only he can fill. All right? He, he, he's, he made the donor hole in you that only he's got the hole that can fill it. All right? The munchkin. You know? So he can only fill that spot. You try to fill it with everything else. Okay? All the sins of the world, the, the, the drugs, the lust, all, this, all the other stuff, power, whatever. You try to fill that, it's a temporary fill. It goes away. And then sometimes you have to pay extra consequences because of it. It's, it's death. All those roads lead to death. Okay? Only the road that Jesus puts you on leads you to life. All right? So now, let's say you accepted Jesus and you're saved. And some of you have done that already. Okay? So you have, you're, you're a son of the king. You have his mark on you. Okay? You have his authority. You have his name. You have his power of attorney. Okay? Because the name of Jesus is above all names, and every knee will bow to the name of Jesus. And if you are a son of God, then you have every right to use that name. Okay, you can effectuate these in the name of Jesus. Alright? You have that power. Amen. So the Holy Spirit is the one who baptizes you into Jesus. He immerses you into Jesus to the point where you say, Lord, I surrender. I give you my heart, I give you my life, I give you everything that I have. Right? Now, Jesus told the disciples 
right before he ascended up to heaven, he said, Now tarry in Jerusalem until you are endued with what? Power from on high. Okay? What was that? Okay, we know it as Pentecost. <laughs> the day when the Holy Spirit came down and lighted little tongues of fire on them. Okay? So that they could see, you know, because these disciples uh, needed some visual aids, you know. So they needed to see that, that they were all being baptized with the Holy Spirit. Okay? Once they had the baptism of the Holy Spirit, they were endued with power from on high. Now it was Jesus' turn to baptize them into the Holy Spirit. You see how it works? They're a team. Okay? Now the Holy Spirit, a lot of people say, oh, you know, I'm just going to wait until I'm led by the Holy Spirit, you know. Unless, I, uh, uh, unless you know, I get a leading, I'm not going to go anywhere, you know. It's not how it works. Okay. His name in the Greek is parakletos, which literally means helper alongside. Okay. So he's not, he's not in front pulling you. He's not behind you pushing you. He's alongside. He's waiting for you to make the move. Okay. You ever hear the saying, you can't steer a parked car? Okay. you got to drive it first before you can steer it. So he's waiting for you to reach out, to do things, to say things, and then he's going to come alongside and he's going to execute what you say in the name of Jesus. All right? So he came to give you that power. All right? So that's the second step is to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit so that you can be in union with that power from on high. You will see your life change. You'll receive the gift of tongues. You'll receive the five things that it says in, in, in uh, Mark. These are the signs that follow the believers. Uh, they shall cast out demons. They shall uh, speak with new tongues. They shall pick up serpents. If they drink any deadly thing, will not harm them. They shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. Okay? How would you like to walk up to somebody that has pain and say, be healed in Jesus' name, the pain's not? Okay? We've done that. Okay, so not, does anybody have pain in here tonight? Okay, sir, would you come up, please? Where do you have pain? kingdom of God comes in power, not just in word. Okay, where's the pain, sir? Right here in your leg? Okay, what's your name? Robert. Robert, my name's Frank. Nice to meet you. Father, I thank you for Robert, and I thank you, Jesus, that you love Robert so much that right now you're going to prove to Robert and to all these people here how much you love us and how much you love Robert by setting you free of this right now. So right now, Robert, in the name of Jesus, I command this pain to go now in Jesus' name. Let me heal Hit me, heal Move it out. Check it out. How's it feel? Feels good. Is all the pain gone? It's gone. Praise Jesus. Praise the Lord. The kingdom of God is in power. Paul the Apostle said, I will come up and not see who is puffed up, but I will see the power of them. I will know them by them. That's the power of God. That's the Holy Spirit that just did an operation on Robert right there. And set him free of this pain. Okay. What better demonstration can I give you? If anybody else has pain, we don't have time to do it here, but please come and see me as soon as we're done. And we'll set you all free. Jesus will set you free because it's He who does it. I didn't do a thing. All I was was the vessel. All right? Because I have no magic, right, Robert? It's Jesus who did it. He set you free. All right? So that's the second thing. Now the third step is if you are born again and you've received the baptism of the Holy Spirit, now the next step is John 14, 12, and it's right in your book. Okay, and I can quote it from memory because it's my life verse right now. Jesus is telling his disciples, verily, verily, or amen, amen, there you have it again. He who believes on me the works that I do, meaning the miracles, raising the dead, healing the sick, cleansing the lepers, the works that I do, he shall do also. Okay? He didn't stop there. He said, and greater than this shall he do, for I go to be with the Father. Alright? That's our mission. That's what Jesus right now is calling you to do. If you're willing to take up that challenge. Alright? And you may not be ready for it. 
Okay, you may be a little scared that you could actually have that power. Okay, that you can actually do those things and perform miracles, just like what happened here with Robert. Okay, but you'll grow into that. But that's our calling. That's what Jesus is calling us to. All right. So right now I'm going to give you an invitation. All right. Any of those three things that we talked about, if you would like to take any one of those steps, please stand up and come on forward, and we'll pray together for you to receive those any of those steps. All right. So. I know always the first one's the hardest. Come on, let's let's get on up. All right, God's got so many blessings here for you. You have no idea. All right, come on up. Come on up. All right, we're first going to pray for salvation, and then we're going to take the next step. All right, Father, I thank you for these men right here. I thank you for their courage and their boldness, and I thank you for everyone that's in their seat that is about to get up and come down anyway. And, and not care about what anybody else thinks or even what they think themselves. They know that you are Lord and you are God. And right here tonight, they want what you have, Lord God. So I pray for them right now to, to, to soften their heart and to come on up. Father, I thank you for these men. I thank you. And right now, just repeat after me. Father, I thank you. I love you. I love you. I know that I've sinned. I know that I've sinned. And I, I beg you and I ask you to forgive me. Of all of my sins, and to wash me clean in the blood that you shed at the cross. Thank you now, Jesus. Come into my heart. Come into my heart. Come into my life. Come into my life. I surrender to you. I surrender to you. I give you everything I have. I give you everything I have. Take me and use me. Take me and use me to your glory. Your glory. Okay, so that's the first step. Welcome into the family. You guys are saved, born again. Now you're sons of the king. All right, congratulations. Now, if you'd like to take the second step, or if anybody has already become saved and now wants to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit and receive that power that we talked about, now's the time to do it. If you don't want to come up, that's fine. Do it right in your seat there. But just repeat after me. Father, Father I thank you for your promise. I thank you for your promise. That you, are willing that you are willing to give me the Holy Spirit. To give me the Holy Spirit. And Jesus, right now, I ask you Jesus, right now, I to ask baptize you. me in the Holy Spirit. To me the Holy Spirit. And to fill me with that same power. And to fill me with that same power. That the apostles received. That the apostles received. That you walked in on earth. That you walked in on earth. And the same power that raised you from the dead. And the same power that raised you from the dead. And right now I believe it. And right now I believe it. I receive it. I receive it. And I have it. And I have it. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. All right. Okay. Now, I'm going to pray for you now. And I'm just going to pray. Father, I thank you for these men. I thank you, Lord, that they have dedicated their lives to you. And thank you, Lord, that you have filled them with the Holy Spirit. Lord Jesus, you said that all who come unto me, out of his belly will flow rivers of living water. So I ask that you let these men experience that tonight when they're in their own prayer time. That you will let those rivers of living water flow out of them, Lord. That you will... Give them the gift of tongues and that they will be able to speak a new heavenly language with you. And right now, Lord Jesus, according to your word in 1412, okay, uh, we now dedicate these men to your service, Lord God, that they will go out and do the same things that you did. So now if you want to repeat after me and accept that challenge, Jesus. I accept your challenge. I accept your challenge. You told us, you told us that, he who believes in me, that he who believes in me, the works that I do, the works that I do, he shall do also. He shall do also. And greater than these shall I do. For I go to be with the Father. For I go to be with the Father. So Jesus, right now I accept your challenge. So Jesus, right now I accept your challenge. And I will go out and, and do, do the greater things. I will do greater things. And I will do the works that you did. And I will do the works that you did. I don't understand exactly how. I don't understand exactly how. And I ask you to teach me. And I ask you to teach me. And to give me the courage to just step out in faith. And to give me the 
courage to step out on faith. And to just do it to your glory. And to just do it to your glory. And now, Jesus, we just give you all the praise and the honor and the glory. Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Lord God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. All right. Come up and close us out.